technical skill. I could just have anybody do my job, but really but have to. You just went okay. recently, I think you just went through something recently. You just went, went to a program or something. You were telling me yesterday um, about this program and uh, that you went through. Has is, is it, is it changed you or what, is, what does it do for you? Well, I've been on the personal growth path for over 35 years, but this particular workshop was so profoundly different that I've never had a technology completely engulf my body where it's just part of me and now things that triggered me in the past I can identify as a trigger and react in present time and then get over it and have no head noise or no drama or no nothing seems to be causing any um, noise anymore it's the biggest gift and I have learned to feel so secure in my own skin, in your own skin, own in your body. skin. and I feel so solid in my ability to really know why I'm here to help people connect. I was going to say because when you know people actually wear everything on their face, the anxiety, the happiness, the crying, the laughter, everything is you know comes through the body, but it it truly comes through the face. So. What you're doing with your treatment, does, uh, which makes them feel better, feel more comfortable, um, how do you, I mean, do you massage them? Do you feel, do you talk to them? How, how do you sort of get them all in, into sort of relaxing and feeling really good? And is this how you do it by going to these sessions yourself to find out how you can feel and then you pass it on to them? Mm, no, I think it's, some of it is certainly energetic. And two, I have to, like, Certain people are much more physical, certain people are not. I happen to be a very physical person where I will ordinarily just come and grab you and give you an, a hug and a kiss. But I guess for learning how to pick the people that that's good for so that I'm not in somebody's space until they let me in. So part of that is really learning where they let me in and how someone lets me in and, and how you know, how in their face they want me to be and how protective. And I usually let people kind of let me, they tell me what they want, and then I usually will kind of meet them. Yeah. Would you ever, uh, or do you, do you ever travel to, to any uh, location or to a private patient who wants to pay the price? Obviously, absolutely. it would be very high. Absolutely. And ha have you done any of that? Oh, absolutely. These celebrities want me to go to, on site. What about in Europe or abroad or anywhere? Have you been there? Do, do they ask you to go there too? Not so far, but I love it there. <laughs> so you're, you are actually ready for an invitation to go there? I'm ready. Oh, my God. It would be my dream to do this in Europe. My studio well, makes you actually feel like you're in Europe. Well, it does, yes. You've got a very European touch because you've got all these. I mean, you showed me, a. I think it was a waste paper basket that cost something like... <laughs> Eight hundred dollars or something <laughs> from the palace. It was all individual needle pointed. Oh my god! But this this makes who you are. I mean, this makes you a total individual. If somebody else wants to go into this business, not that I'm trying to sort of get other people to open up, but if somebody you know for the younger generation and they would like to get into something like this, how, how would you suggest it for them to help them? What they would do? The, we have our audience and our listeners, and I'm sure we've got a lot of young people out there listening to our program. How would it? You know, how would how would you sort of suggest to them what they should do? Well, first of all, you have to really have a passion for helping people. It can't be just something you just want to do as a career. Because yeah. if, if that's the case, you might want to maybe go into hair. Because, you know, when you're working with somebody that you're going to see on a regular basis, and that means could be weekly, could be biweekly, could be every other week, you know, as opposed to a hair once every six to eight weeks, you really get to, the, to know people and they become part of your life. I joke around and say my business is my only way to be legally codependent because I can really engage with people and they're become my family. Yeah. I, I would imagine you sort of, you, you, you build up your clientele. How many years have you been doing this? 28 30, years, you said? 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 years. 
30 so years. You must have started when you were like 10 years old, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, even when I started doing makeup, my first interest, aside from beauty, because I love, my mother was a makeup artist and I was a portrait artist, but I went into paramedical. So I mm -hmm. really do this for healing. You, 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 and you think this, well, I would I, imagine if somebody feels good, they, if somebody feels good after getting, getting the treatment they get from you, which I had yesterday, I would imagine they would feel good. You know, it sort of gives you an uplift. It makes you feel good, especially as a woman, you know, when you're getting older. I mean, there's absolutely nothing, nothing you can do about getting older. I mean, we, the, the, the years go by, you get older and you can't really go back, but you can, you know, put yourself together and make yourself look good. Um, yes. Do you think more women should really pamper themselves, or well, even men as well? You know, I keep talking about women, but you know, men like to do this too. I mean, oh hello. my god, oh, yeah, it's a, an incredibly pampering thing. And when you actually look in the mirror and like what you see, just think of what you're going to connect on the outside. Well, yes, absolutely. When you wake up in the morning and you have that tired look, and you have the dark circles, and you just don't look right. No matter what you do that day, you really can't get your zhuzh up because you look in the mirror and you don't feel like you look your best. And then if you haven't done work on yourself, then I had lunch with a girlfriend the other day. She was like, oh, my God, and what will people think of me? I have a wrinkle. And I'm thinking, people don't look at you like that. <laughs> they want to know what you have to say. They're not looking at your wrinkles. So if you're still traumatized by that at this stage in life, oh, my God, there's loads of programs we could all recommend. But Absolutely. You I'm know, you want to feel your best. And for me, I also work with people that are having challenges with aging. Like I just went through a terrible illness where I had put on 55 pounds and, and working through problems with menopause and, and different stages and then toning your face as you're losing weight so that so that you don't have the sagging when you finally lose the weight and have all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. On, on that, Laurie, I'm going to have to interrupt you. I hate to interrupt you. We're going to take another break and we'll be right oh. back. You are listening to Real Coaching Radio, building a positive network.